Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and I've got a huge report to share with you. As you guys know, uh, I bring on David Hebner at least once a month because we are going to be kicking off, or we're here really soon, a television series, The Last Evangelist. And we've got updates not only on that, but there are some scary things happening in California, particularly a proposition. I'm going to let him tell you about it, but it's being voted on, and it could severely damage the church if you're a Christian or any religious belief for that matter, because there's multiple beliefs, but any religion really, this could really hurt, uh, but specifically Christianity. Not only that, but we're gonna talk about a marriage, if you will, between Hollywood and social media, something that is gonna just send chills down your spine, because if that happens, we're looking at mass censorship on a scale we've never even seen before, uh, and certain things allowed to be viewed that, well, your kids shouldn't be watching. Uh, but with that, David, are you with me over there? Hey, Lisa, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. It was, it was great seeing you in here, The Watchman. I know we were both running around like a crazy chicken, but it was good seeing you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great seeing you too. And you know what? Um, I'm, I'm talking to you from Hollywood, Hollywood, California. And as much, you know, it's kind of like it's a love-hate relationship. You know, I love California and Hollywood in a certain way, but I can't live with it. You know, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, it's, wait till you hear this, Lisa. You're going to just, it's its more than you could conceive. You ready for this? Well, tell, tell us about this proposition. Let's get straight into that because when you told me about it today, I was like, oh, that's bad. All right, yeah, let's do, let's talk about the proposition. And then we're going to go into what is happening in Los Angeles. And I call it the super mall of the Antichrist. And I'll explain that in a minute, Okay. So this proposition, 2943, which they have proposed, which it will pass, folks, it's just a matter of time, okay? And this is a sexual orientation change efforts. And what does this mean, okay? Basically, under the AB 2943, a religious ministry could not hold a conference or on maintaining sexual purity if the conference encourages attendees to avoid homosexual behavior if attendees are paying for the admission. So what that means, basically, if you're holding a conference, and by the way, it could be your or my show if we're charging for it, right? And we talk about uh, uh, homosexuality. No, forget about putting down homosexuality. If we're trying to encourage people not to become a homosexual, or to not to have a gender a gender uh, change, and we tell them to go buy a book, or we in, uh, encourage them any way to uh, try to get over their behavior, even if they want to. Basically, that's a criminal offense. That's jail time, and also you pay huge penalties. Uh, second, when a bookstore um, could not sell uh, or publish books uh, that's challenging gender identity ideology and advocating uh, that, um, that, that these beliefs should be rejected by society. So you can't even sell a book. So if you're somewhere and you know you go to these meetings and conferences and, you're, and you buy a book on helping you with your sexuality, um, you, you could be arrested for that. It's against the law. A pastor paid to speak in an event addressing current social topics could not encourage attendees uh, that they can prevail over same-sex desires or feelings or that they were born <laughs> in the wrong sex. So if you're speaking right now, it says if you're paid, but what does that mean? I mean, that means most pastors are paid, right? That you can't get in the pulpit and you can't talk about uh, someone's uh, sexual behavior uh, being wrong, even if they admit it's wrong and they don't want to be that anymore. So a guy wants to be a girl, but he doesn't want to be a girl. He has these feelings. Well, a pastor can't even talk about that. Uh, forget about coming against it. And and here's the thing I want to add is, you know, there's so many religions and I'll even put it out there. You have Christiana, Christianity, Christianity, Catholicism, you have the Jewish religion, you have even Islam that believe, Jeho Jehovah Witness, I mean, all these different religions believe, you know, that it's sinful, if you will, right? That's the yeah. truth, that's, that's what it is. 
And yeah. nobody's saying uh, we want these people hurt or anything of that nature. And in God's eyes, sin is sin, whether you are cheating on your wife or whether, you, which we speak against, hey, don't cheat on your spouse, right? Don't commit adultery. Don't have sex outside of marriage. Don't, uh, you know, the homosexuality. These are all things that are biblically and in, in Christian religion, but also they have other religions with similar beliefs, if you will. So that's why I'm saying all audience need to pay attention to this because it's not about uh, how somebody feels. I mean, if somebody wants to be a homosexual, that's up to them. You know, they, they answer to God. If somebody wants to cheat on their wife, that's up to God. You know, those are things that you fight between or you have to battle between you and God and God will ultimately be the judge of where we are in the end. And we know the biblical stance on that. But the problem is it's a straight up attack on our first amendment right. And that's what we all have to stand in solidarity against and say, if you want to believe one way or another and you're not hurting anyone and you're not forcing people to do it, that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with believing something uh, as long as you're not hurting anyone or forcing anyone or, you know, of that nature. And and I think that's even, you know, where God stands. God doesn't say you believe my way or the highway or, you know, it's up to you. And that's why we all have that freedom. And, and our First Amendment is definitely at stake. Yeah, well, here's the thing. They're not even saying, California is basically saying, they're telling you what to believe and what not to believe. Because when we can't come and help uh, someone make a decision, uh, they're, California is saying you can't do that. If that's, even if the person wants to change, California is saying, I'm sorry, but you can't even want to change. So don't seek out advice on trying to get help on it. That's number one. Number two, Lisa, you hit on something very, very important. And I want to talk about this for a second. What about the Muslim, Muslims? What about, you know, they're terribly against homosexuality, okay? Uh, what about these other uh, religious groups that don't follow Jesus Christ as their core belief, uh, Judeo-Christian uh, beliefs? Well, I believe, Lisa, that this is an attack on Judeo-Christian beliefs. I don't believe for a moment they're going to come against Muhammad. I don't think they're going to come against Muslims. I don't think they're, they're not, they're not going to come against anything that they feel like is not a threat. You see, we as true believers, as the remnant, because we have the power of God in us, we're a threat to them. That's why you'll see where they'll start sectioning, sectioning us out as true believers. And we'll say, well, what about Muhammad? What about Muslim? Oh, well, and they'll find some reason for that. There'll be some cockamamie you know, a little law they'll throw in there that's crazy. What say you on that? No, I agree. I agree. The The ultimate end game is the Christian belief. Ergo, uh, you know, because a lot, what happens in a lot of the other religions is they'll cave into it. They change, right? Uh, right. Christianity stays by the book. <laughs> and so, or at least branches of Christianity, the true Christian vein stays by the book. There's obviously ones that have already slanted off and gone way off the deep end, and that that is what it is. But the remnant, if you will, follows the Bible the way it was written, the way that God directed it to. So yes, I agree, the ultimate end game is that. But in a sense, everybody has to remember, it is a First Amendment right. If you feel a certain way, you shouldn't be told how you can think, how you can feel, how you can act, or what you can say, or you'll have a repercussion of jail. You know, it's not about that. If now, if you say, if, if you flat out say, oh, I want to go kill someone or murder somebody and buying equipment, well, then you deserve jail, right? You're going to go to jail. You have a repression because you're, you're putting someone's life at stake, harming someone. If you're out there saying, go hurt somebody because of their gender, that's a problem. You, you get, you know, that's an issue, but that's not what's happening. And that's not what it is. And that's not what's being attacked. What's being attacked is a simple belief or a simple statement that we should be allowed to have on our First Amendment right. Uh, and that's where I stand to as well. No, absolutely. But speaking of First Amendment right, did you see that dog and pony show with Mark Zuckerberg and, and uh, 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 Ted Cruz? I mean, and I'm going to say dog and pony show. I mean, it's like I'm looking at this and it's almost like 
I would I I could write this into Last Evangelist very easy. I mean, it would just be playing there perfect. I mean, come on, you know that Facebook has an agenda. And even Zuckerberg said, okay, the people I hire, I understand most of them are out in left field, you know, paraphrasing. I understand they, they have a political agenda. Uh, yeah, right. Well, you hired them, right? Is there a reason you hired people with political agendas? Maybe you have a political agenda yourself, you know? And so... This is why I want to talk about Facebook, Google, uh, the big players, uh, Yahoo, Amazon coming together, Lisa, into one spot in the United States in Southern California and what I, I'm calling the Super Mall of the Antichrist. These players are going to be key players in these end times that we're in right now to promote this anti-God message. And this is what I wanted to re, uh, talk to you about and, and, and the listeners out there. Uh, before I do, can I give people the website real quick, lastevangelist.com? Okay, guys, go to lastevangelist.com, sign the newsletter. Uh, if uh, God leads you to donate, that would be great, too, because uh, I mentioned lastevangelist.com, and I wanted to tell you guys what it was for those of you that didn't know. Um, but do you want me to go on with this? Uh, oh, you got your hat on. I got my hat. <laughs> See, where's your hat now? Where's your hat? Yeah, I, well, I got my T-shirt right there. See, there you go. <laughs> yeah, great. I'm, I'm so excited to get started on it with you. That's for sure. So make sure you guys go to it, check it out, uh, subscribe to the newsletter. There's a donation page as well. So make sure you check that out also. Um, but yes. Okay, so the Antichrist supermarket. Yeah, so so there's a there's a town or an area called Palea del Rey. It's basically a, a town right next to Marina del Rey. It's south of Marina del Rey, and uh, there, there's an area in Playa del Rey they call I believe it's called Playa Vista. And you've got uh, Facebook, you've got Google, Yahoo, Amazon. Now Netflix isn't there because they just bought the Warner Brothers studio for billions of dollars down in uh, Hollywood. But what does this mean? This means that all of our players have got together in one central location, right? One mind, one brain, one means of operation. And they have an agenda, Lisa. Believe me, you know that and I know that. There is definitely an agenda. We saw that with that interview between Ted Cruz and Mark Zuckerberg. All right. And where they're housing, Google just moved in there and they call it the 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 uh, uh, Silicon Valley, the new Silicon Valley or the Silicon Valley South or something like that. But but they took over the old Spruce Goose hangar that Howard Hughes built uh, that uh, the Spruce Goose in, which was that Hercules. Uh, I think it was called the Hercules four or something like that. It was it was that plane that he built uh, dur during World War Two, I believe it was. But what's happening here? is they've all come together in one spot and as censorship grows, which we've been talking about, they're, they are all part of manipulating the censorship. Why? Facebook, we know why, because you're on there, right? Uh, you have your right to voice your opinion, where well, they're gonna tell you you're not. Uh, hey, what about Amazon? Well, Amazon's in two phases of it. Number one is they ship stuff out, okay? They can start, regulating what they're going to ship out, what they're not going to ship out through the one world government. And they're also in the field of broadcasting. They also have Amazon, which brings you movies. OK, uh, so now you have Google. Well, we know what Google's up to. We know what's happening with that. So you got all these entities that's come together under this one umbrella. And I want to tell you the his, just a little bit of the history of Hollywood and how Hollywood has always played a part in getting across the devil's agenda. But before I do that, do you have anything to say about what I've just uh, told you? No, I think you're spot on. And I agree. That does sound like a perfect cocktail for the Antichrist supermarket because you got everything there. I mean, Amazon sells it all. Google controls the Internet. So everything is controlled. We got food. We got uh, you know, clothing, shelter, all these things in an envelope, uh, you know, things that we need and have to have to survive all under the banner of the Antichrist. Now, we just have a, um, I don't want to go uh, too much longer. So we'll, we'll conclude up here in a moment. But yes, yeah, share those, share those final thoughts and okay. then that'll be good. 
let me share with you real quick how Hollywood has always embraced and actually promoted the, this, this agenda, this evil agenda. In 1800 was the burlesque shows, okay? The burlesque shows turned into strip T shows in the early 1900s. The strip T shows, uh, uh, places where they had the strip T uh, shows, actually turned into movie theaters, okay? They were called Nickelodeons. 1920 uh, is when they started releasing the silent movies, the short films, and they promoted the World War I agenda. You would see the World War I uh, movies there. And then that went on to uh, World War II, where they promoted the agenda through uh, as the theaters grew. But then guess what happened? Then came the birth of television in the 1950s. And that's when they started getting into the home. And that's when it started affecting the family. OK, and so I'm, I'm giving you this information, Lisa, so you and the audience can understand how Hollywood, how the devil uses media to get to the families and get to the people. And now what is he doing? Now he's going through the Internet. Now he's going through social media. Now he's going through Facebook, Amazon, Yahoo, Google. And that's why we have to be really careful as Christians. Everyone, please keep an eye out on this. I agree 100 percent. And um. Uh, don't forget to check out all his links below. Those are going to be in the description box below. Uh, but subscribe to the newsletter, thelastevangelist.com. It's the last evangelist, right? You yeah, it's the last evangelist, but they can also go to lastevangelist.com too. Both work. <laughs> that's good. That's what I thought. And then uh, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter because that's how you're going to keep up to date because you're also looking for fill-ins and whatnot as well, correct? A absolutely. Absolutely. And God told me not to go to investors, say, go to my people. My people will support it. My people will watch it. So if God puts on your heart to donate, please do. Lisa, you're in it. Uh, you've got a pretty substantial part in it and you're a good actress. Um, I'm excited about that. And I really appreciate you helping to get the word out. You've really been very beneficial in this. And I thank you very much. Well, thank you, David. And thank again, uh, all you guys for tuning in. Uh, this has been Lisa Haven and David Hebner signing out. Back in 2007, when the stock market looked like this, few people were worried because they didn't know what was going on. But look what happened next. The warning signs were there then, just like they are now. The U.S. stock market has never been higher. Many are saying it will go higher, just like they said in 2007. Are you ready for the fall? Do you know what to do? I know what I'll be doing. I'll be calling Noble Gold. I would be finding out about gold and silver IRAs and quickly. I would want to make sure that my 401ks and IRAs were not exposed to this kind of collapse in the market. Be on the safe side and call Noble Gold today and talk to them. The number's here.